Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy. My channel's Finding Value. Was scrolling on uh, Twitter, looking at things, and wanted to comment on something. I uh, just wanted to read what William Middle Coop had said. Willem. Uh, he says, how can inflation be temporary when mega money creation is permanent? Uh, Joseph Brown had responded with, the money supply growth has collapsed. That's the M2. And the M2, uh, if you were to look at this from long-term trends, and I'll just show you uh, what that looks like. <clears throat> the M2 money supply goes up and down, uh, and inflation is lagged behind it. So if I were to kind of zoom in the last 30 years, we can see that we had a massive move in the M2 money supply rocketing higher. Inflation usually moves with the M2 money supply, and we can see that we've been declining in the percentage. So this is a disinflation uh, move. It's, it's declining. Where we could potentially have inflation uh, come back down. Now, there's one thing I wanted to talk about this. Uh, this is true that the money coming into the system uh, has been coming in at lesser of a rate than before. But there's there's a couple of confusing things here. I, I consider inflation money coming into the system. That's the M2 money supply. The red line and the way that they measure it doesn't necessarily equate 100% to that black line. So you can have money come into the system, um, like this one here in 2009. They printed a bunch of money for the 08 crash. You can see this ramp way up. They printed a bunch of money there. But notice that the inflation rate didn't go up as much um, as it did as the, as the money supply did. The way that they measure inflation is through the consumer price index. The consumer price index is a measurement of money that is rotating into commodities uh, and then eventually into uh, the consumer price index. So it's it's basically the producer price index. It kind of flows through. It's not 100% correlated, but it's, it's highly correlated. So we're measuring money that is getting into products. That's, that's what they're measuring. Uh, it's not necessarily a direct measurement of the M2 money supply, although the M2 money supply does have a large impact on inflation. So think of money coming into the system. They can print a bunch of money, it comes into the system, but if it doesn't get into the hands of people, if it doesn't get into commodities, uh, you won't get that huge uh, inflation number of that red line there. It won't show up in the consumer price index. We can see where the money goes. Uh, that's what ratios give us. Uh, we can see, and I, I can show you with 100% cer certainty where that money has gone and where it went in 08 and 09 is, so we came all the way down, they printed a bunch of money, went all into the stock market. That's why we have these large Dow to gold ratio. That's why we have you can go over here. I can show you <clears throat> real-time charts. If you look at the S&P 500 to commodity ratio, that's where, let's look right here. We, we can see, there it is. Of course, I blow right by it. We can see that all the money went into stocks. That's why this went down so much. That's how this um, ratio became so out of whack. Uh, we've never been this low, I think, in history ever. But all that money was created and it just went into the stock market. That's why all the ratios are th so thrown out of whack. Uh, when that money rotates over, it's going to go back into commodities. Um, if commodities have shortages, money's going to rotate to it. Uh, that money rotation will show up in the consumer price index. Uh, so you can have I think you can have, and this is this is it's a weird scenario that we could have. We could we could be shrinking on the inflation or money coming into the system, but the money shifting between sectors will still show up in the consumer price index. Does that make sense? And it, it's funky. And usually, when money comes into the system, that money comes into the system, uh, it it comes in. We see inflation, and 
uh, the interest rates move up and then money starts to rotate differently. That inflation will still be seen as long as the money rotates out of stocks and into commodities, uh, given that the CPI numbers continue to go higher. So if we have shortages in commodities, we will continue to see inflation, uh, given how they measure the consumer price index. And one of the things that we can look at, and I know it's not 100% um, over, but we can look at the pr producer price index, uh, which is this guy here, and we're still continuing to rocket higher there. So we still have that drive of commodities. Uh, we can look at the CRB index. Um, actually, I, I can go all the way up top. There's a bunch of stuff up there. <clears throat> The CRB index is continuing to go higher. So I still think that we'll see um, the consumer price index remain robust. And I know they're lying about all the numbers in the consumer price index. You can look at the housing numbers and they are vastly off. They said that it only increased 5%. There's no way it increased 5%. It had to have gone more. There's nothing... <laughs> Rent and, and the price of, of homes have gone up more than that. So I don't believe their numbers. But either way, we've got the, the commodity group is still coming. But there is the chance that we see disinflation. Why? Because the M2 money supply is going down. But it, what, the way that they measure it through the consumer price index is through uh, the price of those goods. And then they hedonic adjustment, they substitute, they, don't, they do all this garbage to it. So we could still have... Uh, consumer price index, even though the M2 money supply comes a little bit lower. Uh, it's something to watch, and it's something where inflation rates could slow down. And we, we're on top of it. Uh, we're looking at the M2 money supply. And I don't think rates have much to do with it. I still think that... the here, Here's another thing that I wanted to talk about. I want to go back to the long-term trends. <clears throat> and what makes things a little bit more difficult uh, this time around, uh, in terms of of reading these things, back back in the 1970s and before, uh, we had I would say more free market. It, it was a truer free market than what we have today. And these these movements in the M2 uh, money supply were driven by loaning in real estate and all these loans that were created in the system. Uh, now, since about 2009 or 2008 and on, uh, they're do they're playing with all this money printing, and it's not necessarily going and 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 going into areas where where we uh, would normally have this money go. So it's throwing a bunch of garbage in in the data. Uh, I mean, this spike is obviously stimulus driven. Uh, there's some stimulus in there. There's some real estate movements in there and they're trying to suck stuff out of it it's very difficult to know what's what and what is actually driving what anymore because they've, they're playing with these numbers so much do i think a commodity bull market's still intact we i, I do uh, i'm just looking and seeing well could we could we have lower rates of inflation yes we could and it could be coming uh this here is January 31st, 2021, it takes about 18 months. That would put us roughly where we are at today uh, till the end of the year. So we could see lower rates of high inflation. We could see lower rates of higher inflation based off the M2 money supply. Now, remember, they're measuring this through the consumer price index. I know I'm going back over this, so we may not. It all depends on how commodities react, and commodities have been robust right now. But it's just something I want to let everybody know who's on the channel, or let everybody know this, uh, that we have seen a decline in the M2 money supply, and this is highly correlated to inflation. And the inflation that they measure may or may not be impacted depending on a whole bunch of things of how money rotates and gets diverted in the system. Another thing that you can look at to verify this, um, if we were to go to trading view, and then you go to the gold price. The gold price is another way that gauges future inflation uh, to some degree. And when we look at this, this inflation kind of, it started running in 2000. And basically, I mean, we had a couple of pullbacks. 
went all the way up to 2011. Now we've had this nice big run of consolidation, a break higher, and are we going to run higher? This is sitting on top of a pattern. It looks good. Uh, so this is another way that we can gauge if, if gold takes off uh, to the upside. I do think that we are still in an inflationary environment, and all the people and market participants that are trading gold think so as well. But this usually front runs uh, inflation as well, and this front run it from 2018 onward. And, and we'll see what happens. We have to continue to monitor it. This looks good to me to go higher uh, with time. Yeah, we're still sitting on top of pattern. So everything's still intact. I'm just letting you guys know that we do have a decrease in the M M2 money supply and that we need to look for a decline in inflation rates and watch some of our, our technical analysis and patterns. Uh, the real estate market is really hot. Uh, it is, I think, it will... It, it will I don't think we are going to see a deflationary bust from real estate. That's why they're raising interest rates so fast. Um, they know that, that, that they're not going to get any sort of relaxation from that area. So uh, history has shown us that, which was in more of a free market environment, just stating that, that as long as the housing market goes up, we are in the, the later stages of that real estate cycle we're in the later stages of the of the business cycle and when we're in those later stages that usually indicates uh that the commodity game is is game on and that's what we need to measure and, and watch so we've got a declining m2 money supply even though we have an increasing uh real estate market with how with increasing housing starts that's usually inflationary but they're 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 playing with stimulus money uh, and they're, they've, they've pumped the system. Now they're trying to drain some of that back out. And we could see some ramifications to it. But that's all I've got for today, guys. Give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, subscribe to the, the website. The Platinum membership is the membership that I would choose myself. Uh, we do have a question and answer session at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time today. Uh, if you want to join that, uh, go on the website. It's the top one. Uh, just click on that. Put it in your web browser, the link to the Zoom meeting, and you'll be all game on for a five o'clock meeting to ask questions uh, with myself real time. If you want to join uh, and, and join in on that, you have to become a Platinum member. Uh, if you want to become a Platinum member, the website link's below, and you can check it out. All right, guys, uh, we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.